Thank you. I wanted to welcome everybody to the Town of Webb November regular meeting. I'd like to thank everyone for coming. Please sign the attendance sheet and please turn off your cell phones. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next regular meeting will be on December 10th at 7 p.m. December Audit of Claims meeting will be held on the first Monday, December 2nd at 5.30 p.m. Executive session may occur this evening if deemed necessary. Correspondence, the board received a letter of retirement from Steve Eustervenus, the Macaulay Mountain Manager, effective 11 11 24. I'd like to thank Steve for his 30 years of service. That's an incredible record. So thank you, Steve, for your many, many years. We appreciate that. Macaulay Mountain Ski Area Manager, do I have a motion that the board appoint Kevin Cress as Macaulay Mountain Ski Area Manager, effective 11 11 2024? I'll make the motion. Kyle, do we have a second? I'll second it. Mike, is there board discussion? Mm -hmm. okay. nope. See what happens. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Very motivated. He was on a temporary appointment, and he is now fully appointed. Um, do we have a roll call vote, please? Councilman Lindsay. Aye. Councilman Hanna. Aye. Councilman Greco. Aye. Councilman Ross. Aye. Supervisor. Aye. 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 Delegate for the annual business meeting for the Association of Towns. Do I have a motion to designate Bonnie Baker as the voting delegate for the annual business session for the Association of Towns of the State of New York to be held on February 18th, 2025? I'll make a motion. Tom, second. I'll second it. Ben, board discussion? Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Roll call vote, please. Councilman Lindsay. Aye. Aye. Councilman Greco. Aye. Councilman Ross. Aye. Supervisor Baker. Aye. Bye, guys. Retirement section 41J of the New York State Retirement. Subdivision J of section 41 and subdivision J of section 341 of the Retirement and Social Security Law allows a participating employer to elect to provide additional service credit toward retirement for its employees who are entitled to accumulate sick time. The benefit applies to all tiers of membership. The additional service is available for those members who are included in the plan established by law, rule, regulation, written order, or written policy that provides for regular earning and the accumulation of sick leave. For Employees Retirement System, ERS, members that are in tiers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, the maximum additional service credit allowed under Section 41, Subdivision J, is 165 days. For Tier 6, members' credit is available for a maximum of 100 days. <clears throat> for police and fire retirement, PFRS members, all tiers under section 341, subdivision J are granted 165 days. The additional service credit is applied on a work day basis, 260 days equals one year. Members who receive a cash payment based on their accumulated sick leave at retirement are not eligible for the additional service credit. Payments for the unused sick leave cannot be considered in the calculations of the final member's final average salary. To provide this benefit, the employer must file a resolution with the retirement system attesting to the election of this benefit for the employees who are members of the retirement system. 
I need a motion, be it resolved that the town of town board of the town of Webb does hereby elect to provide the pension benefit of section 41J of the retirement and social security law as presently or hereafter amended. Be it furthermore resolved that the effective date shall be the first day of January 2025. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Kyle, second. I'll second it. Mike, board discussion. Yeah, I just had one quick question when I mm -hmm. was reading through all this. So when they when they retire and they have whatever the days there is that they're collecting on, that is for the payment of the wages that at that date, if you know what I'm trying to say, I mean, because you've been here and you, you get an increase pretty much every year. Right, that's what your chair so will the tell you. The last year of your when you re, when you retire, that's what you, your your wages are going to show. That's what you're going to get for those shows. many days. You understand what I'm trying to say, Nance? Yeah, it shows day, it's days. <laughs> so it's 165 days. Right. For and you, get, and you get paid for the wages that you to that date. What what your wages are for then? Well, your current salary. Current salary. Current salary, yeah. salary correct. Yes, current your, salary, current correct. Current salary at that date. Correct. Current okay, salary. Sorry. I Thanks, got you. Kyle. <laughs> yep. Thank you. No, that, that wording helped. Thank right. you. Yeah. Yes, your current okay. salary. Current salary, yep. Any other questions or comments? No, I think that's a, I think it's great. I know it's been discussed a few times. So you can see that we're doing this. Right, we've gotten a lot of questions on when these guys retire and they got a ton of sick time mm -hmm. left. It makes sense to put it in their retirement. Yeah, yep. Great. Roll call vote, please, Nancy. Councilman Lindsay. Aye. Councilman Hanna. Aye. Councilman Greco. Aye. Councilman Ross. Aye. Supervisor Rica. Aye. Bye, bye. Uphill ski pricing in Macaulay Mountain. The town of Webb adopted an uphill ski policy on October 2024. The pricing for the uphill season pass pricing is as follows. It'll be $10 per day or $50 for a season's pass. Uphill skiing is free with the purchase of an all mountain normal season's pass. There are no pre-season specials for your uphill ski pricing. Am I correct in saying that right? Thank you. Yeah. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. I'll second. Board discussion. Oh, nope. It's just something new that that's been talked about that for these guys that are just the ones that hike up and ski down. Kind of talked about that they should be paying something. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Roll call vote, please. Councilman Lindsay. Aye. Councilman Hanna. Aye. Councilman Greco. Aye. Councilman Ross. Aye. Supervisor Baker? Aye. Five eyes. All right, I think we'll start um, with Nancy this evening. I need a resolution, <laughs> excuse me, a resolution. I'm going to do both at once. Um, Big Moose Fire Company mm -hmm. needs a raffle license for 2024. They're trying to sell raffle tickets in December, so we have to do 2024. Actually, I'm going to do them separate. So Big Moose Fire Company needs a raffle for 2024. That's the resolution. I'll make a motion. I'll make the motion. Second. I'll second. I'll second. Ben. I'll second. Ben. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And then the next one is for Integrated Community <laughs> Alternative Network. They're 106 Memorial Parkway, Utica, New York. They are gone to all the towns in Herkimer County to be able to sell raffle tickets starting on 10-1-2024. That's all I know. I don't know what they're raffling. I don't know anything about the program. They just want to be able to sell raffle tickets in town. And like I said, they've gone all to all the towns in Herkimer. What's else. the organization? I don't, um, Integrated Community Alternative Network. 106 Memorial Parkway, Utica. I know nothing else. They just... Asked to sell a raffle starting 10 1. Like door to door? No, I think I assume it's in town. I, 
I just told Businesses. you what I know. I don't know anything. I'd like to get more information on that. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not talking about it right now. Sounds like they already stepped at 10 1. <laughs> yeah. Well, it certainly would have, I would assume, have an effect on our own raffles. Yeah, this came from the gaming well, I don't know commission. Know what it's for. We're the ones that notified oh, me. <laughs> the the integrated community alternative network didn't notify me. It's the gaming commission okay. that notified me. So I can ask more questions. Robin, have you heard of that? No. Okay, thank you. I will try to get more information. I don't guarantee it. And then I have a letter from Polar Bears. The uh, Polar Bear Ski Club is ready to kick off the 24-25 season. Our preparation is underway. We have a large group of youth excited and ready to hit the cross-country ski trails and downhill slopes. <clears throat> Polar Bear Ski Club has awarded the opportunity to hold an Adirondack Council Kobe race for ages U8 to U12 this season. The date race is Sunday, February 9th, 2025. We would like permission to ask from the Town Whip Council, Kevin Crass Mountain Manager, to hold this race at McCauley. Last year, we had a great success with our mountain held races as attendees from mountains across New York State. They really enjoyed McCauley and cannot wait to come back. As in the past year, we've also requested the town continue to extend a free pass for each coach per 10 kids. At this time, we have approximately 45 Alpine skiers. We would ask that you extend our club the preseason pass discount or any additional coach club passes that we may need to purchase. The list of names will be emailed to Kevin Crest for final review and approval. The Polar Bear Ski Club Alpine members will continue to practice Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday afternoons after school in addition to weekend practices. We will work directly with Kevin Crest to nail down a schedule that works best for both the, both, both the Polar Bear Ski Club as well as the Mountain. We had a successful season in 2024 and like to continue growing and building upon our race program. At this time, we have approximately 55 plus athletes, some doing multiple disciplines between Nordic, biathlon, and alpine, and we look forward to those numbers grow, continue to grow. We are very thankful to Steve Eustavinas, Kevin Kress, and the Town of Webb Town Council for supporting our race events each year and look forward to the incredible improvements to the mountain and working together. Thank you for your consideration and ongoing support, Polar Bear Executive Board. So I assume we're going to do the same thing we've done every year. Uh, yeah, there's no changes yep, in there. No changes. <coughs> thank you. Uh, we have a thank you from Kayak, the Community Youth and Activity Center. On behalf of Kayak Board and students, we'd like to extend our heartfelt thanks for your generous donation of $3,000. Your support means so much to our group and will make a real difference in the lives of the youth we serve. And then one more, Herkimer County Office of the Aging. We'll be holding a short public hearing about senior services and a representative from Herkimer County Public Health will provide information and administer flu boosters. Friday, December 6th at 12 to 12 to 2.30 at the Old Forge Library. Uh, please share our thoughts on the services the Office of Aging provides as well as many additional services that may be needed. You can call um, to reserve a seat for the public hearing and free light lunch call. There's a number here. I'll have this up on my board and I would imagine they're going to put it in the paper. Um, they're asking by December 27th to make reservations. And that is all I have. Thank you. I believe we also cover the insurance with the kayak. Don't we still? I am, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Part of our policy. Mm -hmm. um, I just have a couple things. We had a way smarter <clears throat> treatment plant progression meet, progressive meeting this on Friday. Um, they're on their last stages of the project. Falter Construction stated that they'll be back in the spring to do topsoil, seed, and haying because they didn't think this week would be a good day, week to do it. Spencer Electric will be on site a little bit longer. Our financing reimbursements from the state are coming in in a timely fashion still, so knock on wood. Um, in July of 2022, the supervisor formed a committee to help with the furnishing and the needs of our sharp house. We no longer have a sharp house, so we no longer need a committee. Thank you to Margaret Vandalinder, Carolyn Trimbach, Hazel Delavia, Mary Brophy Moore, Linda Grace, and Reed Proper for helping with this transition. Kristen Freimeyer will continue as the town's sharp rec director. Thank you to Kristen and our weekly volunteers who continue to keep this program up and running and a thank you to Nichols Church for providing us with a new home. We appreciate that. 
Um, as our fall season comes to an end, I want to express my thanks to everyone in our community for coming up with all the wonderful events that make our community possible to run. Your time, effort, and dedication over the past year have truly made a difference, and it's amazing to see everyone come together and work so well together. I'm grateful to be part of this wonderful community, and I look forward to our winter season and all the all the events it brings forth. Um, that's all I have. How about you, Mike? Well, I think I'll go right into that event thing real quick then. Um, being a part of the CAA for as many years that I have, a lot, a lot of years, we are noticing that um, a bunch of us are starting to get a little older, and we certainly would like some help from a little bit of the younger community, because <laughs> these events are extremely important, and I just hate to see them have to go away because we don't have people to run them, but, but, uh, so I think it's extremely important. Um, so let me see. I did have a question for the board. I'm kind of jumping the gun a little bit here because I have not talked to Hannah about this. But because we don't have the martial arts program here now, but I understand that it is up and running, I was wondering if you guys were okay with me talking to her and finding out if, by chance, I don't believe they have mats, and we bought mats so that they could wrestle on it or do their thing on it. I wonder if they could either borrow it or, you know, use our mats until they either purchase or yeah. something happens. Absolutely. Um, I don't see a problem with that. As long as she doesn't have something scheduled, because I did not ask her, but I'd like to. If you guys are okay with that, I'd like to do that for that program. Who would they? It would just be the program in general. Is there? Because it's, it's it's not a town program. They're going to be somebody who would you know if they came back or if that program doesn't. Have, yeah. I do know she uses it for toddler time. Oh, does she? But I, I don't. I, I, I don't I know what that involves and how much of it it involves either. So. so oh, so you haven't talked to Hannah about it yet? I have not. You have I, not. I okay. want to find out if they're being used. Yeah. If they're just sitting there in a pile. I'm totally open to it as long as yep. there's some sort of agreement or you know if they were going to come back or something. Those things were they were like four thousand dollars. I know it's a lot of people that are involved in that. So that was just a, just a question. To make sure, sure. you're jumping in. Um. Something I brought up a long time ago, and I'm going to bring it up again because the Eagle Bay sign got knocked down. Coming into Eagle Bay, says so "Welcome to Eagle Bay." It got knocked down a long time ago, and I brought it up, and then it got forgotten. Other things going on, but I would like to look into finding out who built it and built it and, and put it back up. I think they deserve to have a sign up there. <laughs> okay. Um, Do you think that was done by Luke? No, no it, I was think it was done. KD signs or something okay. like that. We went and picked it up like in Morrinsburg or yeah. at the time. I mean, he so could do it. Now? He could do it. It's down. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's been down for a long time. Well, what's one of my thing? All the welcome signs. Well, you see the one at the yeah that yeah the welcome the bathrooms there. But that's not the welcome. That's not the one you're talking about now. Um, you're talking before, Henry and Eagle Bay welcome to okay. Henry and Eagle Bay welcome. Um, I gotta go loop me. I know that we did have a discussion, and this this is something I'll just just for you guys to think about. I'd like to further into this. It brought to our attention. I think Bonnie and I were in the room at the time. One of our employees said that works for the DPW said that the dumpsters, some of the dumpsters that they're picking up are getting pretty shaky. Bottoms are falling out, lids are falling off, and I think we should probably start putting a, our finger on making sure these things are safe to be lifting up and. I think it should be mandatory for these businesses to have a safe dumpster. <laughs> I'm glad you're addressing but that. I want to start dealing with that. I don't know if there's a, there's got to be some sort of inspection or something somewhere. There's got to be some sort of safety right. person that could say like, hey, you know, I don't know, I don't have a dumpster, but hey, front door, your dumpster's no, it's not, it's not going to, it doesn't work right. anymore. You got to get a new dumpster versus... Right. Us saying that maybe, you know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think it makes it a little different. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to Scott about it or you know, find out some information. Yeah. Okay. And the only other thing I'd like to say is I'd like to uh, thank Steve U for all the years that he's yeah, been working sure. at that mountain. He's, he's done a wonderful job, and I hope his uh, retirement goes well. And that's all I got. Thank you. Tom? You want me to go? <laughs> We're going to work. 
I was just following the old agenda there. Well, I've got a little thing I wrote up. I don't know. I woke up. Instead of having me blab, I figured I'd just put some stuff on some paper here and, and uh, just go over some things that have been going on around the town. I've kind of responded to a few things and haven't really got into too many things and just tried to address it as it comes. But, um, yeah, so I just woke up, started writing on my phone, had a had a, uh, a friend look at it, help me out with it. So I'm just going to let her rip here and we'll see what happens. So, um, Going into my fourth year as a Webtown board member, this is my 35th monthly meeting. It certainly hasn't been easy, but I've tried to face challenges with open arms and do my best to face adversity head on. Um, what I learn over and over again is that this town is special. Its people are too, but I also see far too often that we get caught up in who is who and whose town it is. We are, we are a diverse group of people who own property and businesses or work here with dreams of owning property or businesses or raising families here. Some of us have been here for generations and some of us chose here more recently with new dreams for the future. Sometimes a sense of entitlement shows its ugly face. None of our lakes and rivers are yours. Those mountains are not yours. Those trails are not yours. Buildings, you know, all that we have here is ours. Uh, we have a duty to protect what we have for many reasons, and we must understand that it is our only economic resource. Without the beauty and recreational activities that those long before us created, we have nothing. Uh, a self-preservation mindset needs to take the back seat in order for us to move forward. Um, just because an activity or event isn't your thing doesn't mean it's not beneficial to someone else or to our town. We each have to embrace the thought of other people's happiness. If we're lucky enough to own or rent in this area, we have to wish the same for our local librarians, cashiers, teachers, police officers, contractors, cooks, servers, town workers, and anyone else uh, willing to contribute to our community. Might help with some of the volunteer stuff, you know, the problems that we're having there with that, with that sort of thing, housing, all that stuff. You know. Collectively, can we can we please start progressing toward the townwide mindset of being kind and working together? That being said, we as a town board need to wake up. We can't get out of our own way. A lot of our problems originate originate from previous instances years earlier and old conflicts that haven't healed. Our town clerk was put in a tough position years ago, and he's got to still. And has yet still managed to weather many town conflicts. She's also been the public face in dealing with every citizen's issues for over 20 years. That's not easy. Public service is hard. Uh, the good in Nancy can be best seen through her family when she talks about them. Our supervisor has been a punching bag during so many crucial and tumultuous town problems over the last three years. Her first meeting was masked up in a cold park ab gym during COVID. Supervisor Baker came into the position without any political background and had to deal with strong personalities townwide along with the budget, the citizen requests, and the day-to-day -day responsibilities of leading a municipality. It is not easy to do. Um, as I've mentioned before, town officials get a lot of feedback, but before we become so quick to judge or assume that this is easy, remember that you too can sit up here. In the last two elections, the same two people ran for supervisor and the last two town board seats ran unopposed. Town clerk had been unopposed for years until April Dice had the courage to run. As you go into an election year, can we treat each candidate with respect and gratitude? Bonnie Baker, Mike Ross, Nancy Russell, and that man, Ace Feller, all free election in 2025. This isn't the White House. It's a small town, and we should thank those that want to help this town by running for town office, just as everyone here signed up to do. Um, Almost two years ago, we decided to dive into a 35-year-old existing snowmobile contract with our neighbors and friends in Inlet. The trails are connected. We aren't one without the other. From the very beginning, I asked why adjust this now, especially with declining snow accumulation. Well, we did anyway. The public arguments ensued, followed by the town of Webb paying an additional 3% of the shared permit revenue to Inlet. I heard from my colleagues that we were, that my colleagues that we were supposed to only work for the town of Webb taxpayers, but you know that move didn't add up in the end. Um, the bears, another big issue. It's really unfortunate. It breaks my heart that people had to see cubs killed. However, it's been this way ever since we decided to settle back here. Um, thankfully, wildlife conservationist Don Andrews gave us some advice on how we can fix this problem, and a DEC officer took time to explain those types of situations so we have a better understanding. But as a community and board, we pointed fingers at tourists as if they're supposed to know that they can be uh, that, that they can't be odd that a 400 pound black bear they've never seen before is 100 feet from them. I've seen bears my whole life up here and I'm still starstruck as it happens. 
Very grateful to Don Andrews and Officer McDuff for those educational sessions, and I hope we put their advice into action instead of blaming terrorists. PBA agreement. I want to settle the PBA agreement. I said at the last meeting, it's frustrating to hear the board's conversation be driven by past experiences involving family or sick leave, injuries, and the former police chief. It's a negotiation. The PBA have stated what they want, and the board is supposed to respond. We came with fair percentage raises and an upgrade in their retirement payouts, and as a board, we made an agreement to present these numbers to the PBA. What happened next? A lawyer said, nope, don't present those numbers. So we didn't, and now here we are. Last I checked, we are charged with running this town, not the lawyer. If we'd like to address the schedule or fine-tune some concerns we have, that's fine. Hopefully, we'll have a new chief fired soon to handle those duties. Um, other one, you know, the, the, the employees were losing people, you know, and it's kind of frustrating. And there's, there seems like there's, there's a, a, and everybody's satisfied with their, their, their work here. Um, you know, we had, I, I just think that we, we've had a worker move departments. We've had some, some, you know, we, we've had a long time worker pass away. We've had another uh, death on the job. And I just think we're, you know, loss is a part of life and something I've suffered. It's really hard. It's harder on some than others. My question is, can we do more? Can we possibly hire an on-site therapist, one that is here two or three times a month? Be glad to provide an office space if, if, if needed, if that will help. You know, when tragedy strikes, we all want to help and be there in the moment. But sometimes the, the weeks following can be the most troubling for anyone involved. In a place where the sun doesn't come out for three months out of, out of the year, a rising cost of living and a long history of mental health issues, doesn't it make sense for us to work on providing these services regularly for our people? Um, after almost three years in the town board, I know we can improve the quality of our town jobs in many aspects, and I hope this is one of them we can work on, among, among others. Um, housing. You know, why do we keep failing to address housing here? You know, um, volunteers, people, numbers in our school, all sorts of things. It's the number one issue across the Adirondack Park. It's causing the demise of local towns and threatening so many more in this area. We had a developer that wanted a building housing project that might have helped us. A lot of folks that we don't want to hear. We don't want people from Utica here. Well, guess what? I'm from Utica and so are a lot of good people, including many that helped build this town. I respected the concerns of our taxpayers and the project got turned down, but that was almost two years ago now. And we haven't addressed housing since. And when we do, there are consequences. Just last month, I watched Danny Rivet, an 82-year-old man who has given his life for this town, mention that our police problem stems from not having afford enough affordable housing. Instead of a respectful dialogue, he was laughed at by numerous people in this room. Housing is key. The town is thriving nine months out of the year. The cost of new business has risen immensely. We need our businesses and services open so they can sustain. Do we think we can continue to survive on seasonal help? We need businesses and services available to our residents and visitors. Our sole economic engine is tourism. Do we think we can go on forever doing that with J-1 students or H-2B international help? What if the federal government changes guidelines to disallow international workers? I personally am so grateful for those seasonal workers. Without them, our summer and fall economy would fail. However, those seasonal workers aren't investing in the town. They aren't here long enough to volunteer or be a part of the community. What is so wrong with welcoming new people, new families, and new workers to move here and live here to support our town? You're not always going to know everybody that walks into those buildings or, or walks into this town, but we need to start seeing the good in people and the good that new people can do in our community. Moving forward, can we embrace people wanting to live here and be a part of this community instead of pushing them away? Fortunately, locals are creating some housing solutions. The motels in Thunder will help. Don Ross apartments. The STR restrictions we're working on will hopefully help us. Too often we focus on the negative, and even worse, we often ignore the negative, meaning we don't discuss the negative. We, we go away from it. We always just want to talk about the positive that we're doing here. Um, it's also important to recognize the positive. So, Let's look at what we have and where we are moving forward. Over the last three years, we secured funds for an income survey to help seek grants for our much-needed sewer upgrades. We passed a short-term rental law. We expanded our bike trails. We brought life to a vacant building at the George C. Hilton Recreation Center that has done so much for our children and families. We up, we've upgraded to meet the state-mandated UV treatment guidelines and our wastewater treatment plant. We got our hauling under control at the transfer station. We have a real working dialogue with Inlet's Town Board and John Khalil and the ADK Snowmobile Advocate Group to improve our winter trail system and snowmobile culture that I'm interested to see how well that goes this winter with or without snow. The town has hired some amazing people. John Brosmer and Bill Green join the rest of our amazing town workers. Um, look at what our recreation manager Hannah Wheaton has done across the town and she hasn't even been here a year. 
We just hired a highly motivated, experienced young father of three with strong ties to Macaulay to become our mountain manager. The sky is literally the limit with Kevin Crest, and we owe a big thank you to longtime manager Steve Yu for keeping our town run mountain alive for so long. We just replaced a six-year-old chairlift and got grant funds for a magic carpet ride. We've got upgrades with compressors and snow guns on the way. The deck, the deck, the deck is almost done. Um, the town will hire a new police chief to help keep us safe by the end of the year. It's amazing to look back at all that that's been done, all while taxes have stayed low and fair. Look at we all have done for our community. Lastly, can we take a moment and remind ourselves how lucky we are to live here? People from all over the world want to be here, and we get to live here. We're all on the same team, and we all work better when working together. <laughs> and, and can we just try and be kind to one another, even when we have to agree to disagree? That's all of that. I just have um, one more thing to go off of that. We had that great zoning meeting. Um, the other, the other night and you know we, we hope to get some of that scheduled the zoning update that to, to go to public hearing it's looking like um, that's, that's hopefully going to move forward. Thank you Ben. Thanks. Well thank you all for coming in tonight. Um, I'd like to thank the board and all the department heads um, for working on the budget and spending a lot of time figuring it out. Um, thank you, Steve Eustavinas, for your years of service to our mountain. Um, last night, I talked to Jason and Kevin, and everything up at Macaulay is still on track. Um, Kevin's planning on getting the snowmaking system charged up, make sure there's no issues with it, mm -hmm. um, get ready for the season. Um, I want to talk to the rest of the board here about um, looking into um, having someone fabricate bases for some of the chairlifts and putting them on the new deck and trying to keep numbers that have significant you know, dates to the mountain mm -hmm. or to our Olympians up there and keep them local. And uh, hopefully by next uh, month's meeting, We've got cold temperatures and snow for skiing and snowmobiling. Mm -hmm. So, looking forward to it. That's all I got. Thank you. Thanks. Kyle? Uh, I don't have very much. I do want to say thank you to Steve Eustavinas for his uh, years of service to the town and to that mountain. Um, he's done a lot for that mountain and this town. Um, I'm excited for Kevin Crest to take over, and he's got big shoes to fill, but after many talks with Kevin, you know, he's, he's going to do great up there. Big things coming. Um, I want to thank all the town workers as well. Um, not enough thanks goes out to them, besides what they do on a normal day-to-day -day basis. I mean, this past week, the DPW guys were out hanging Christmas lights in Point Park, which was it's always I, I get to see it right from the front window of the store there, but it, it's always a laugh <laughs> right to watch them and talk to them while they're doing it. Uh, thanks to the CAA for all the events that you guys do. Um, it's been great. Thank you. Um, I know a lot, a lot of weekends when we're not expecting much at the store, especially recently with the beer fest. Uh, a lot of people. Oktoberfest. Sorry, sorry. Uh, a lot of people. A lot of people in town for that. Um, so it's good to see. Um, you got quite the following there, and I'm excited to see what else you got. Um, but other than that, I really don't have much. We went through the budget, and then I went away on vacation, and then I got sick. So here we are. Thank you. Yep. All right, now we're off to the public. Anyone have anything they'd like to discuss this evening? Yes. My name is Sally. I just want to say thank you to Hannah Wheaton, the rec program director, who had to move us together to go over to the rec center and take a look at the floor. And she learned the shortcomings of what's going on with the floor for pickleball. So if she's mm. looking into that, see if she can work with the installer and the company to see if they can help us out with. Uh, Get the video, play over so, thanks, Thank you. Yes. Yes, John Khalil, ADK Snowmobile Advocates, uh, Councilman Greco. I'd like to thank you for the kind words and certainly keeping in the spirit of uh, your thoughts. I'd just like to make a brief announcement. Uh, ADK Snowmobile Advocates is presenting a town hall meeting to hear the snowmobile safety concerns of residents and business owners 
from the towns of Webb and Inlet, uh, public officials, law enforcement, EMS personnel, anyone else is welcome to attend. This is taking place Thursday, November 21st at 5.30 p.m. at the Old Forge Library. Uh, I don't expect it to be a long meeting, but the goal is to get constructive feedback. As I said at the last board meeting, uh, it's a privilege to snowmobile in these communities. And I believe that we as snowmobilers need to do our part. Uh, it's very easy to sit back and criticize government, say government should be doing this, that, and the other thing. But I believe that we have an obligation, again, to do our part. And then hopefully can take some of that feedback. And when I sit down with uh, uh, Councilman Hannah and Councilman Ross, we can try to work with that feedback and and, uh, and use it to provide some guidance moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank That's you. at 530 on the 21st. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, Robin Hill, Living ADK. Um, with the Dell's help, we figured out that that organization you were talking about, the raffle, is the shortened version of their name is ICANN, which um, oh, I know. Remember they work with the school, and they're a um, family and individual mm -hmm. high service need organization. So, but we looked on their website; it doesn't mention anything about a raffle. So you may still want to check on that. Okay. Uh, I, who it is? Just so the board knows, I I highly support ICANN out of out of Herkimer County. They help with a lot of families, help with families with disabilities, making sure that they get the services that they need. Mm -hmm. Bonnie, is that a nonprofit organization? I believe it is. Yeah, it must be. And secondly, um, you were kind enough to respond to my email about the shed for the market. Yes. Was everybody else okay with us moving yes, forward? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. I think that their email came to me and then I went to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Um, before the work that's going, up, going on up at Macaulay, do you know is there going to be a designated internet connection to the top of the mountain? Because it'll be working. Very a bunch of pipes and wires and everything else. I mean, because I've been begging yeah, you guys for years for a, a designated connection so I can run the cameras that the town uses for free. And it's getting more and more difficult to keep, you know, get a Wi Fi signal at the top of the mountain. Um, I don't know where we're at with those um connections right now what just got upgraded up there what was that There's, didn't we just get like real internet up there no y'all no. might want to look into no. starlink yeah i'm we, just telling you yeah. it is pretty Spectrum amazing can't get up there in our area here and Spectrum it, can't get up there yet it'll work and for safety purposes yeah. it's probably worth the investment mm -hmm. yeah. yeah thank you i'll try to get an answer for you on that steve okay okay Sorry, I'm making a note. Hang on. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Hi, I'm Ron DeBray. Um, was it Mike made the comment about the Eagle Bay sign? Yep. Um, the ones with the gold leaf lettering, is that down? Yeah. It's right yeah. on the corner of Bunkers Road, that one? No, 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 no. no. no? It was right just before, it was on 28, just before the uh, donut shop. It said, welcome to Eagle Bay, right before the... I don't know. Uh, the gold leaf lettering, though, it may like have the one that sold for... Yeah, I think it did, Ron, yeah. The rec center signs for the gold leaf lettering. Yeah. Similar. Yes. Very, very similar to that, yes. By K.D. Wheeler. Yes, I, yes. I thought it Signs that. in Queensbury, New York. I, I tried to call them six months ago when I was taking pictures of all the signs, because I think they're beautiful. I'd like to see somebody do them in town, because they are apparently out of business. I yep. need to talk somebody local into... Hitting that kind of sign, they're beautiful. they're gorgeous. Uh, I think well, we yeah. do have a person. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else? <laughs> Anyone else? Do you, want to go back? do you want to go back to ICANN? I, I was going to suggest that. Yeah. Do you want to do the raffle since we? Thank you. Yeah. Since you know who, yeah. who and what they are. Who it is right now? Yeah, we didn't. We didn't, we didn't support, support. undo anything, right? We just can. No, we're yeah. just yeah. Red team. So I just need a motion to be able to give them a 2024, it looks like 2024, 2025 for raffle tickets, to sell raffles. Well, I'll make a motion. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Do I have a motion to pay the audit of claims? I'll make the motion. Then second. Okay. I'll second it. All in favor? 
Uh, opposed? We have a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. Kyle, second. I'll second. Tom, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for coming.